Today's workout is a 20 minute full body postpartum strength workout designed to help you burn fat without depleting your body of what it needs to recover from childbirth and care for your baby. You'll need a set of light to moderate dumbbells for upper body and a set of moderate to heavy dumbbells for lower body. Let's get started. Hey mamas, welcome to today's 20 minute postpartum fat burning strength workout. We're gonna work full body with dumbbells. I suggest two sets of dumbbells, one for lower body, one for upper body. I'm using 10 pounds for lower body and five pounds for upper body. Let's get started. We've got two rounds, 50 seconds on, 10 seconds rest. Get your heavy dumbbells ready. We're gonna start with a deadlift to a wide squat. So hinging from the hips, bringing those dumbbells mid shin, and then step your feet out wide, dumbbells between the legs, squat down. Let's repeat that. Hinge from the hips, dumbbells come down the legs, chest up, step other side, squat wide. So you can see those dumbbells are tracking right along my thighs, knees, shins, back flat, stand up, squeeze the glutes, step wide, knees out, hips back and down about knee level. Here's a side angle for you. So sliding those dumbbells close to the legs, squeeze glutes, core engaged at the top, knees out, butt down, good posture in that squat. Let's do a couple more here. We've got two rounds of every exercise, so we'll really focus on the form the first round, getting the technique down, and then we can speed up and push ourselves, work on the execution in the second round. Rest. Let's move on to a front squat with a back lunge. Bring the weights up here. You can place them on your shoulders or toward your chest collarbones. We're gonna do a squat first, hips back and down, then step back into a lunge. We're gonna alternate lunge sides. Squat again, other leg goes back, lunge. So you can see, just like that first squat, feet are just outside hips, toes out, and then in the lunge, we're dropping that back knee toward the floor, 90 degrees, hip to ankle in both of those movements. Here's a side profile, so knees to 90. Front knee over ankle, back knee goes straight down. And we're aiming to get that front thigh parallel to the floor. You can touch the knee lightly on the floor, but you don't have to. You can also do this one without the dumbbells if it starts to feel like it's too intense. We wanna keep those weights close to make sure our posture stays lifted. Rest. We're gonna move on now to a front squat to a side leg lift. So feet just a little outside hips. We're gonna squat down and then side lift, alternating sides. Squat down, side lift. So getting those outer thighs and hips. We're gonna shift our weight. You can see that shift happen right here, but you notice I'm not leaning over with my upper body. I'm keeping everything engaged and balanced on that opposite leg. Great for the core. And again, those small muscles in the hips and glutes. We're doing a lot of squats today, as you can already tell. So make sure again, you're keeping that weight heavy in your heels, lighting your toes. I don't want you gripping through your toes or pushing your knees forward. You should push your butt back and down, and therefore you're gonna get it more into the legs and glutes, keeping it out of the knees, that's what we want. Okay, we're gonna go to a lateral lunge, to a curtsy lunge. We're gonna start over on the right side. So step out wide and then step back, curtsy lunge. Let's repeat that same side. Step wide, step back. So my arms are long here, chest is up, shoulders are back and down. You've got a little squeeze between those shoulder blades. Notice the placement of the dumbbells between the legs and then outside the thighs. With the lateral lunge, toes are straight ahead. You're sitting into that hip of the stepping leg. And then curtsy lunge. Front knee pushes out, back knee goes to the corner. You might not get as low in the curtsy lunge, and that's okay. You don't have to go quite as low to still get that outer hip work. But the lateral lunge, I really want you to focus on going low, taking a big step out. And then once you step out, sit back into that hip, keeping the chest up, even as you're hinging forward and then push out of that front foot to stand. Rest. All right, we're gonna do the same thing, other side. I'm out of breath already, guys. I think that's a good sign, though. All right, let's step out wide, and then step back, curtsy lunge. So this leg, this stationary leg, is doing a lot of work. We're getting that inner thigh, and then the outer hip. 
this leg, we're getting the outer hip in the curtsy or in the lateral lunge, and then that quad in the curtsy. So if you wanna work all your muscles in your legs, your glutes, this combo's got you covered right here. We're getting everything. Make sure again that chest stays lifted, shoulders are back and down, core is engaged. Here you wanna push off that foot to stand up from the lateral lunge, then push off that stationary leg to come up from the curtsy. Really gonna fire that glute, and help you find stability because this one is a balance challenge for sure. Rest, all right, moving on to the shoulders. Grab your lighter set of weights now. We're gonna do a front raise to a lateral raise. Bring your feet underneath your hips, Arms are gonna come straight up, straight out, down to the legs, repeat. Straight up, out, down. Side profile, arms are straight the whole time. Hips under shoulders, abs tight. We don't wanna thrust the hips as we move the arms. We wanna keep those knees soft, abs braced, so the core has to get stronger with the arms and supporting the body. Shoulders are retracted, back and down away from the ears. And then elbows are just soft, so you're not locking out the arms. This is really challenging because the further away the weights go, the harder your arms and your core have to work. Feel free to take it slow. It's not a competition. If you can only do a few reps, just do a few reps. Make them good, but just do a few. Rest. We're gonna move on now to a bicep curl, overhead press, tricep extension. Lots of things going on here, I'll show you the breakdown. So we're gonna curl it up toward the shoulders, press it up, dumbbells together, extend it back and down to the base of the neck, up, lower down, arms straight. Let's do that again. So we curl, press, back and down, base of the neck, extend, slowly lower down. So when the curl rotate in the press, pinkies forward in the extension dumbbells together, base of the neck, extend up, all the way down on that drop you can keep them together or apart your choice up press extend and you don't even have to keep them together on that tricep extension this actually makes it harder when you keep them apart but if you want to make it easier bring them together like so again keep those knees soft abs tight here to support the body throughout this movement it can be challenging finish what you're on we're going to stop moving on to an arnold press so you're gonna take your dumbbells up, facing you, elbows to 90 degrees. We're gonna press up, rotate knuckles to the back, rotate knuckles to the front, that's it. Knuckles to the back, knuckles to the front. So stability is really key here. Abs tight, knees soft to support the body throughout this. You wanna keep the shoulders back and down. And as you take the weights up, you're going slightly behind you. Can you see that? To get into the rear delts. If you need a little recovery, drop down and hold it here, then come back up and repeat. So give yourself a little break. And you're getting those biceps too, can you feel that? A lot of these moves are compound movements, meaning we're working multiple muscles with one exercise or working the same muscle group just in different ways. So you get more bang for your buck here. Couple more. Whew. Next, we're moving on to a bent over row. We're gonna go narrow row, wide row. Feet hip width apart, hinge from the hip, back long and straight, chin tucked. We're gonna pull elbows to the back of the room, then take the elbows wide. Same thing again, elbows to the back, elbows high and wide. So pulling those dumbbells to your hips, then taking them out wide. So from the side, you can see dumbbells to hips, engaging those lats, dumbbells wide, getting more to the upper back. Strong and stable. I'm not coming up from that bent over position. Heavy in the legs, strong through the core, good posture. And then that wide row. Think, take those arms really wide, take the dumbbells really wide, right under those shoulders. And you can see that rotation happening, getting into those different muscles in the back body. Rest. All right, we're moving on to the floor. Push up to a side plank. You can use your dumbbells here or not. Knees wide, shoulders over wrists. We're gonna do our push up first. And then side plank, knees or toes, lift that top arm, and then place it back down. Push up, 
side plank. This is the knee down version. You can either drop that dumbbell too as another way to modify it. So lots of options. You could keep the knee down. You can use the dumbbell. You can go without the dumbbell. But I want you to focus really on that strong push up. So chest to elbow level here, belly braced, strong rotation, meaning shoulder is over the wrist in that bottom arm and then the top arm, wrist is above the shoulder, nice straight line. You're controlling the movement. And if you find you need to modify, just take the dumbbell down. That'll take a lot of that pressure off. We really wanna focus on that strong core engagement here. All right, rest. We're gonna move back to our feet. But first we get a little extra break. So use this time to grab some water, shake it off, do what you need to do. Now, how did that first set feel? If it felt appropriately challenging, you could stay with the same weight. If it felt too challenging, back it off. If it felt really easy, maybe a little bit of extra weight, but regardless, this next set will challenge you more because we started to fatigue the muscle. Grab those heavy weights, back to our deadlift to the wide squat. Feet hip width apart, shoulders back and down. Hinge, step wide, dumbbells between the legs. Hinge, squat. So we're getting those hamstrings, glutes, core, quads, glutes, hamstrings in the squat really functional movements. How many times a day, if you have an infant, are you doing these movements? You probably don't even know, but I'll tell you, it's a lot. Bending over to pick up your baby or pick up all the things they throw on the floor if your baby's my age. About one, lots of throwing going on these days and lots of squatting to clean up messes. Couple more here. Rest. All right, moving on to that front squat with the backwards lunge. Rack the weights up at the collarbones. Feet just outside hips, butt back and down, lunge. Repeat, butt back and down, lunge. So toes are slightly turned out pushing out of that front heel when you stand up from the lunge. Again, whoo, <laughs> you might lose your balance and that's real, but you know what? That's the whole point of doing these exercises is to challenge your stability. If you don't fall over every once in a while, are you really being challenged? I think not. I like to show these in the bloopers because, you know, I'm a real person too doing this at home just like you. I just happened to record it and put it on YouTube. Couple more. Rest. Moving on to that front squat with the side leg raise. So same position, feet a little wider than hips, toes out slightly. You can keep the weights here, or again, if you can you want to, you can stack them here. You're gonna get a little more shoulder activation here, a little more bicep activation here. So it's up to you. What do you want to burn more? <laughs> or you can lose the weights altogether. Again, some of these exercises like this one and the last one we just did can be done perfectly fine without weights. The arm exercises, you could even do them with like cans of food, just something where you're using the same weight in each hand, but you can get creative here. You don't have to have dumbbells. Again, finding that stability, make sure you're not shifting too much Get that leg up. It doesn't have to be super high. You can go here. You're still gonna feel that work in the side glute. I'd rather you go low than go high and lean over. That's gonna take the workout. Rest, we're gonna move on to that lateral lunge with the curtsy lunge combination. Feet under hips, dumbbells are gonna go between the legs. Big step out, here we go. Sit back, step back, dumbbells outside the thighs. Reach down, chest up. So as you're hinging, you're hinging from the hips. Spine is nice and straight. Heavy in that stationary leg. Push through the heel every time you stand back up. Fire that glute, brace your core. Again, great exercise combo to do without the weights. It's only gonna add intensity, but if you need to back it off, to maintain good technique, it's better to go without the weight. And you can always slow it down, take more breaks, listen to what your body's ready for today. 
One more. Finish which one you're on and break. We're gonna move to the other side. So getting those big muscle groups working, we're also getting our heart rate up too. Can you feel it? Big step out. And I love a good strength workout where I'm also getting my heart rate up. Just feels good. Feels good to help take off some of the stress. And if you're a mom, regardless of how long ago you had a baby, you're probably a little bit stressed. So as much as we can take the edge off in healthy, productive ways, in ways that are gonna give us more energy rather than deplete us, in ways that are gonna give our body endorphins, help our brains to function more optimally, help us to sleep better, this is where it's at. One more this side, and we're gonna move to the upper body next, grabbing those lighter weights. If you can stay with heavier, go for it. Maybe you do half and half, you can do a drop set. Front raise, lateral raise. So you could always start heavier, and then if you find 20 seconds in, 30 seconds in, you're like, I can't do that anymore, drop the weights, go down. That's a great way to increase your strength gradually over time. Sometimes 50 seconds feels like way too long to commit, but you don't have to. You can absolutely do part of the time with the weights, part of it without. You can take a break. It's not all or nothing. So don't think about that when you're training. Think about how can I do what's best for my body today? And it's not linear either, as much as we want it to be. Sometimes you have to back it off one day, and then the next week you come back feeling stronger Sometimes that's the opposite, and that's life. That's okay. You get stronger over time. We're playing the long game here. Moving on to that bicep curl, overhead press, tricep extension. Lots of things going on. I'll show you from the side this round. So rotate those dumbbells toward the shoulders, press, extend, press, lower down with control. Use that core. Curl, press, extend, press, lower, nice and slow. Keep it coming. There's kind of a rhythm to this one. Keeping that core strong, especially right here. That core is gonna have to work really hard. Make sure you're not arching your back or thrusting your hips. Keep those knees soft. If you need, remember you have options here. You can keep those dumbbells together. That makes it easier or you can separate them a little bit, making it harder. That just allows the arms to work individually if you're keeping them separated. If you put them together, you get to use the support from both arms. All right, we're gonna stop there and move to that Arnold press. Get those shoulders on fire. If they weren't already, we're getting close to the finish. Elbows up 90 degrees, rotate press. This move is really simple. You're gonna find you can get a lot of reps in in the amount of time. But that being said, I want controlled reps. So hips still, abs tight. And you can see I'm kind of tapping those dumbbells together overhead. You don't have to do that. I don't want you to try to smack them together by any means, but if they touch, that's cool. If they don't, that's fine too. Good posture here. And again, if you need to, bring them down, press and rotate, and you can always bring them back down here for a little recovery. Almost there, guys. Such a great exercise for your core, too. All right, let's rest and go to that bent over row, narrow to wide. Feet under the hips, shoulders back and down. We're gonna pull elbows to the back, then elbows wide. Here we go, hinge, pull out back, pull wide. Keeping that back long and straight. All these movements, you can tell your core plays a really big role, if not the biggest role. So if you're not working on your core strength, you should be postpartum pregnant or not. I've got ab workouts for every phase of life that I've been through at least. <laughs> but yeah, check out my playlist. My postpartum ab program is my most popular program. Any kind of core dysfunction or just in general, wanting to strengthen and define your core and your abs, you need to be doing those exercises. They will really help you get stronger 
and be able to increase your endurance and your stamina with these weight training and cardio workouts. All right, moving on to that push up with the side plank. Again, hands a little wider than shoulders. The wider you go, the easier it will be. This is our last one. Knees wide, abs tight, push up, rotate onto the toes or the knee if you want. Drop that dumbbell. Really focus on that rotation all the way onto the sides of the feet, open up, all the way square to the floor. And again, if you ever need to, just don't lift the dumbbell, focus again. That rotation is the most important component here because we're gonna get into those hips, the obliques. Really good functional strength. We only have a few left. Make it count, make sure you finish even. Done, we made it. 20 minutes, functional postpartum strength. I hope you all enjoyed that. And again, there's lots of ways you can modify and progress that workout. So be sure to do it again. Maybe you can adjust your weights, see what you can do the next time. And be sure to check out my playlist for more postpartum functional strength, core, cardio, and HIIT workouts. And let me know below, what would you like to see on my channel? I always take requests. And I'll see you back here for our next workout together.